We'll worry about all the details that are on this slide here in just a minute, but let me just start out with a little bit of a thought question. Suppose you're sitting in a swimming pool and you grab a water balloon. We'll say there's no water in the balloon. It's just, I'm sorry, no air in the balloon. It's just water. And it's just sitting there totally neutrally buoyant, floating however it wants up and down in the pool. If you start holding that balloon, are you going to sink? Are you going to float? Are you going to stay where you're at? probably said, I'm going to stay where I'm at. I mean, it wasn't floating. It wasn't sinking. Now, let me give you this. Suppose that you're holding onto a chunk of lead. Are you going to float, sink, or stay the same? Right, you're going to float. If you grab a balloon filled with air, air is less dense than water. What's the balloon going to do? What are you going to do? You're both going to float. And that's because the density of the air is so much less than the density of the water. And the lead is much more dense than the water. And a water balloon has the same density as the water. And so if we're comparing our buoyancy versus the buoyancy of these objects, we can see that it's going to you know, have an effect. Now, suppose that we were calibrating a scale inside of the swimming pool. Obviously, it's really going to depend on what material is uh, what material is being weighed. If it was the lead, the air, or the water. The water is going to be neutrally buoyant, which, yeah, it means we're going to have a really hard time weighing it, but just go with me on the thought experiment for a minute. The lead, it's going to be sinking. It's probably going to be pretty close to accurate, but we can also picture there's going to be just a little tiny bit of buoyancy as the water around it presses upward just a little bit, as it flows just a tiny bit in the displacement. And air is going to have huge displacement compared to it, and it's going to float very well. The same thing is happening when we calibrate our analytical balances, our scales. Because we are at the bottom of a swimming pool called the planet, and instead of water, the fluid we're swimming in is air. Obviously, we are much more dense than air, so we sink pretty well. And actually, if we were to look up, let me put on the pen, if we were to look up the density of air, we'd find that at normal atmospheric pressure of one bar, 25 degrees Celsius, density of air is going to be about 0 0.0012 grams per milliliter. Also notice that's going to be two sig figs, leading zeros don't count. So two sig figs, two sig figs, and then this other piece we're going to talk about is going to have three, and then the other piece we're going to talk about in a minute is going to have four. So we can see that our final answers are probably going to have two sig figs uh, in a few minutes. Now, what we just did in our thought experiment is we thought about how the density of our object, which is going to be D, compares to the density of the things around it, air in reality, water in the example that I was using a moment ago, and also how that's going to compare to some other object that was used to calibrate it in the first place. That's going to be the density of the weight they're going to use to actually calibrate our balance. Now, obviously, you're going to have some sort of a lead sinker or something like that that's already been well calibrated. Actually, in reality, it's usually brass or bronze or something like that. So you're going to put it onto the pan. You're going to say, well, this weighs 8 grams. You're going to hit the correct button on your scale. You're going to input that it's 8 grams. The scale says, oh, okay, cool. The signal that I'm seeing right now means 8 grams. Wonderful. I am now calibrated. But. What about the fact that there's a little bit of buoyancy on that um, weight? What about the fact that other objects are going to have a lot more buoyancy from the air around it? Now, you can see a little example of it down here in this table we have from our textbook, table 2.9. This is just showing the correction. So if we were to use this correction, you can see that it's actual mass divided by the reported mass when we put it onto a scale. Well, if we take the reported mass and we put it on a scale, we multiply it by this value, we'll have mass divided by the other thing times our original thing, those two will cross cancel, we'll have the real mass. And we use this value to multiply it out. Now, you can see that if I'm using an 8 gram weight to calibrate it, there's going to be no correction needed when the object is 8 grams. Now, if the object is lighter than 8 grams, there's going to be some buoyancy. And so the object is going to basically be floating in air just a little bit more than the brass weight was. 
and so it's going to appear to be lighter than it actually is. So we have to use this correction factor to fix that. You can see that silver nitrate, we're getting dense enough, it's not a problem. Sodium chloride it is. Water, it really is. So if you're going to do the lab experiment that we do in class, where we actually calibrate, or at least check the calibration on a transfer pipette, or on our glassware, you can see that buoyancy is going to have an effect on that calibration as well. So we need to be accounting for the buoyancy correction to convert from apparent mass to the real mass because the water is going to have just a tiny bit of floating in the air compared to what happened with that brass chunk. Now let's take a look at this one. It says find the true mass of tris. That's a common chemical compound. It gives us our density for our sample and it specifies that the apparent weight in air is 100 grams. In other words, we stuck this on the scale and we saw it pop off the number 100 grams. We're going to assume air to be one bar, 25 degrees, with that density, and we're going to assume that our calibration weight was 8.0 grams per milliliter. So I'm going to go ahead and have you pause the video, try to use this equation in order to solve this value, and we'll figure out what the actual mass is. Come back in just a moment once you've paused and tried it. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. We have our apparent mass that we weighed, which was the 100 grams. And notice that I've kept my sig figs in just like I should have. I like to keep track of it by writing them up with a circle for sig figs. Inside of here I have one, which is an absolute number, no sig figs implied. Density of air divided by the density of the weight. Density of air was my 0.0012. divided by density of the weight, which was 8.0. There we are. We never want to be sloppy and get rid of our units. All right, so now we're going to go to the bottom. We're going to have 1 minus density of air again. Density of air was 0.0012. And that's going to be over density of our object, which is 1.31 grams per milliliter. Now we just need a calculator. Now remember, orders of operation apply. So we're going to have to divide that first, 0.0012 divided by 8, 0, .0 gave me 0, 0.0015. So 1 minus that, then down here I'll have almost the same thing. I'll have my 0 0.0012 divided by 1.31. Oops. Here we are. And I'm going to make this easy on myself by doing plus 1. There we are. So it'll be 0 0.000916. Here we are. So you can see that we have a smaller number on the bottom by about, eh, probably about 40% smaller or so. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract these. I had 1 minus that value. Actually, I'll do the one on the bottom first. So minus 1, get rid of that. So I'll do, there we are. So that's my real value. I just was being a little bit dirty on my calculator. You probably were able to follow along with that. So I'm going to be at 0 0.9991. I'll go ahead and round it to. So that's going to be what's on the bottom for the entire piece. We're going to go to the top. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to have 1 minus 0 0.00. 0 0.00015. Or 99985. So 100 times that divided by that. Divided by 0.9991. Tells me that my actual mass for that should be 
100.08. There we are. 100.8 grams. This should be my real mass. And that's how we would solve one of these and how we'd fix for our buoyancy. Now you can see that for many of the crystalline substances that we're going to be using, we don't necessarily need to be too worried about a buoyancy calculation in most routine work. However, you can see it's really, really critical if we're going to do something like water. We're going to have to have a pretty good correction factor on water. And the book will also point out that we can just use a correction value that we find in a table, where it's m divided by m prime, where of course m prime is the apparent mass and m is the real mass. So if we just look up that for our table and we know something about our standardized mass that we use to actually calibrate everything, the 8.0 grams in this example, we'll be able to just rapidly do that correction factor. We won't really be doing that a lot in our experimental work in our course, but we will probably be seeing that in the homework sets as well.